It's 2 p.m. Eastern, October 4th, and this is QB Talks. I want to welcome everyone to this very late edition of the September QB Talks, which had to be delayed until today. And uh, I will be presenting QuickBooks Desktop 2024, along with comparisons of QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. For those of you that are wondering, this is Murph. Uh, Gary isn't here. He was supposed to be with me today, but he's off playing hooky in Las Vegas at a tax show. Or maybe that was a magic show. I don't remember. But anyway, he's doing a disappearing act today. And so... Uh, I'm here taking care of the technical side of Zoom as well as presenting the material. For those of you who don't know, my name is William Murphy. Everyone just calls me Murph because I've been here since Dirt was born. And uh, I'm the senior contributing technical editor for Insightful Accountant. For many years, I was the host of QB Talks. I write about 250 articles for Insightful Accountant each year, and I also serve as the administrator for Insightful Accountant's Pro Advisor Awards process. Today, we have a sponsor, and it's Avid Exchange. Avid Exchange provides a seamless integration with all QuickBooks versions for accounts payable and payment automation. This allows companies to incorporate an easier, faster, and more secure way to process invoices and make payments. So, if you would like more information about Avid Exchange and would like the opportunity uh, to uh, schedule a demo and earn a $50 MasterCard e-gift card, then fill out this uh, survey, uh, yes, and you'll hear from them. And I'm going to give it a few more minutes because, or a few more seconds, because we've only got about a third, 50% now. And so, folks, if you'd go ahead and uh, click the poll as quick as possible, that'll help us get on with the rest of our show. And I'm going to end this poll in three, two, one. All right. And now I've got another poll because I need to know a little bit about you. So I'm going to ask you to uh, tell us what kind of pro advisor you are. Are you a certified QBO pro advisor or advanced QBO certified pro advisor, a desktop pro advisor, or are you certified in both QBO and desktop? Or are you just here uh, to learn about Desktop 24? You're not a pro advisor at all. So we've got about 50% of our audience that's participated. Go ahead and answer the poll. And we can continue on. And I'm going to end this poll in three, two, one, and. Okay. And before I launch one more poll, let me tell you, it's important you do these polls because we are giving CPE away today, and you have to complete a minimum of three of the six polls I have, uh, and you have to be here for at least 50 minutes. And um, it looks like about 25% of our audience is... Uh, QBO or advanced QBO, maybe a little more than that. Uh, 
only about uh, 16 percent is desktop certified pro advisor uh 36 percent are certified in both and 14 percent of our audience today is just here to find out about it they're not pro advisors at all and uh i do have one mo more poll because i want to know what you uh Think about desktop in terms of how much of your audience it consists of. And I'm going to end this poll. One, two, three. All right. So uh, more than seventy-five percent uh, was it was answered by twenty-eight percent of you, and uh, twenty-five percent of you used desktop less than twenty-five percent. And the majority are then in between the two. So today, we're here to talk about QuickBooks Desktop 2024 and what's new, including enhanced product security and efficiency, their new customer payments deposit feature, enhanced search features, enhanced item category functionality, reporting enhancements, a improved or redesigned employee center, and improved employee capital management features for enhanced payroll subscribers. And that's a long way of saying additional 401k availability. And this chart, uh, gives you a look at who has what features and the new customer prepayments and deposit feature along with enhanced item category functionality and reporting enhancements are essentially only available to QuickBooks Enterprise V24. That's the 2024 users. We can also see uh, for anyone that's joining us from Canada, that uh, seamless product updates, the improved employee center, and the 401k functionality I mentioned are not available to uh, Canadian desktop users. So let's talk a little about enhanced product security. Uh, all versions of 2024 desktop in both US and Canada have received these security measures, which include enhanced industry leading encryption in which the protocols are improved from AES-128 to AES-256. I might mention that I had a Department of Defense uh, client who the DOD told them they were gonna have to get out of QuickBooks because their security was an AES-256. And so I'm sure that they will now be able to get a new review and remain in QuickBooks. Uh, this extends your protection when you are using the product with cloud resources or you're accessing the product via cloud resources. And unfortunately, it a side effect, uh, kind of like a medicine that does great things, but then has a few side effects. Well, the side effect of this is that uh, you cannot upgrade a client's file to 24 from any earlier version if you only have an external accountant login. And uh, that means that those of you who are uh, commonly called on to do
do the new installation and upgrade the file, you're going to have to actually have access to the admin user in order to do that. And uh, I want to look here. Uh, there was a question about QuickBooks Accountant. No, QuickBooks Accountant is uh, going to be available for 24. And um, the uh, QuickBooks Enterprise Accountant is also available. And uh, you will have access to a PowerPoint of the slides uh, along with uh, being provided with the link to the recording uh, after today uh, when you receive your information about CPE. By the way, you do have to be here for at least 50 minutes as well as answer those three polling questions. And uh, along with um, the enhanced uh, security, uh, let me go back here. Uh, there's also new seamless background updates. And uh, you can learn about the update before you actually uh, install it. You don't have to wait until afterwards. And uh, we're told that in a future release, uh, our version, uh, of this year's product, uh, there'll be a change so that you can actually schedule when your product updates uh, install. That way you can ensure that they're not going to impact your work at all. And there's a illustration of uh, once you're notified uh, up in the upper right hand corner, uh, you can access the information about finding out what's included before you click install now. So now we come to what I think of as the only real new feature in desktop 2024, and it's only available to enterprise and enterprise accountant users, but it is available um, here in the US and um, it allows you to essentially eliminate the past practice of posting negative receivables by taking a payment or deposit before uh, the uh, invoice is generated. And this is a great feature uh, because it does everything just exactly in accordance with gap accounting requirements, it provides a smooth workflow, and it also provides reporting. And I really like the fact that we get a new feature and we actually get the reports that go along with it. So many times uh, we have to wait on reports maybe a year after a feature comes out, sometimes longer to get the reports we want. But um, We'll look at some of the reports and how some of that information can be applied uh, to uh, keep you informed about your open deposits. And so, as you can see, this is a feature that's built around sales orders. And that's one reason why uh, it's an enterprise feature. Uh, and uh, you'll see that there's a new receive payments uh, button on the main uh, ribbon. And uh, when you click that, you begin the process of receiving a prepayment, or some people call it customer deposits, some people call it retainers, however you want to do it. And uh, then when you receive that it looks just like a regular customer payment window, except you'll note it's flagged as a prepayment on sales orders. And 
So um, you can enter the information. And then once you've saved it, uh, it will apply to the sales order and both on the sales order screen and the sales order printout. Uh, if you print the sales order, you'll see that the prepayment credits are shown against the balance. And when the sales order is converted into an invoice, QuickBooks advises the user that a prepayment is available to be applied and the open invoice reflects the amount of the applied prepayment when you apply it. And uh, then uh, to go along with that, we have, as I mentioned, a new reporting. One report basically shows you that there are prepayments available to be applied. And then it also shows you that um, another report shows you that the prepayments were utilized. We have another new feature and that's enhanced list search. Now, all versions of QuickBooks 24 in the US and Canada have this feature. It enhances the ability to search for information in the memorized transactions, the fixed asset items, and the payroll items. And it allows for search to be defined by the specific fields in those three lists. And it also allows you to uh, do an initial search and then even refine that search further of the uh, original information you obtained. It's very quick. I will say uh, it's streamlined. So here are the three lists and you can see uh, that uh, you can pick from the fields that you want specifically to search and then you just type in what you're looking for. Uh, you can leave it all fields if you want. And as I mentioned, here's the search within results and we'll look at that. Uh, and so once you actually have done a search and here uh, I searched for just checks in all fields, got the list of checks and uh, then I asked for rent of the specific and it found the specific check that was related to rent. So as I said, and it works quick, no matter whether you have 20 or 30 in these lists, some of these lists might not have too many, uh, but sometimes uh, people do have a lot of uh, information. I'm sorry, I just am having a weather warning go off. <laughs> and uh, then uh, other lists could have be quite lengthy. So um, I've already asked this question and I'm not gonna ask it again. So let's move on and talk a little about enhanced item category functionality. You know, until 2023, QuickBooks desktop and enterprise and specifically only had uh, the areas of like item name and number and purchase description, the sale description, manufacturer's part number, serial alert, and lot numbers for those people using advanced inventory, barcodes for again, advanced inventory users and custom fields. And even with this diversity of nomenclatures, only the item name and number field allowed you to configure a hierarchy. But even when you did that, nothing prevented a user from selecting the parent item rather than the sub items uh, that you'd created the, the hierarchy for. Then last year in 23, uh, we got a new way to identify items in inventory, something they called item categories, which provided an easier, more effective way to uh, identify your items and establish a hierarchical system. Now, while improvements to item categories were made 
in the release updates during 2023, uh, QuickBooks 24 incorporates additional functionality within the enhanced item category list. The inclusion of item categories in the Add, Edit, Multiple List Entry window and expansion of the Find and Select by Item Category option uh, within item-based reports, all are designed to help you make better use of item categorization. So again, enhancements were made and it includes this uh, new uh, category list and it allows you to not only add but to edit, delete, and batch move or relocate items within your categories. Uh, and so you can easily uh, move items uh, or reassign them. And uh, it's one of the things that makes this uh, really a um, keen uh, feature because a lot of people have started out using this and then they say, oh, I don't like the way that's set up. I wished I could change it. And this is the way that you can change and move items from one item category to another. Uh, it also makes it possible to delete item categories without impacting your actual items. And also this year, uh, they added item categories to the Add, Edit, Multiple List entry window. So now you can not only work with your category items, I'm sorry, categorized items uh, and their hierarchies, but you can add items from an Excel spreadsheet directly into your item list and have the categories assigned as a part of that process. And as I mentioned, they also have improved the find and select uh, associated with item categories. For example, you can click on an invoice and then uh, in the item field, drop down and rather than select the item or filter by item name, you can filter by category to find the items that best fit your requirements. And then when you select that category, you can check and mark as many as needed to add those to your invoice. And then also, uh, if you're uh, preparing to do cycle counts, or you're using the advanced pricing feature, uh, you also have the ability to configure both your cycle count or your advanced pricing based on item categories. Then they add a multiple inventory and sales reports based around the categories. So they're not necessarily so much new reports as they are the ability to use those same reports we're familiar with and either sort them or to uh, select on the basis of your item categories. Here you can see how uh, the item categories and subcategories have been used, and then the items appear underneath that. And for many reports that are not category-based, you can even add the item category as a column, and then you can sort or filter on that basis. There is a new inventory valuation summary that is specifically uh, configured as item category based.
and also a new inventory stock status by item that also subtotals and totals by item category. And that kind of takes us into the reporting enhancements or changes in reporting that are available. There are several new or significantly enhanced reports within both the U.S. and Canadian versions of QuickBooks 2024. Note that the reports I'm about to show you were captured from pre-release versions, and so your reports may actually appear different in this final release that just became available. As you know, it was released to uh, Pro Advisors, I believe, on the 26th of last month, and then it was made available to the public uh, for uh, retail acquisition through Intuit and uh, uh, QuickBooks uh, distributors yesterday. Some of the reports that are specific to lots or serial numbers will also be available only to QuickBooks Enterprise users with advanced inventory subscriptions. For those using the lot and serial number feature within advanced inventory, there is a new inventory stock status by lot number report. If you look at this, you go, oh my gosh, look at all of that. But it provides a lot of valuable information and it actually appears quite clean. Expiration dates were a new feature released in QuickBooks Enterprise 23 to help meet the needs of sophisticated inventory controls requiring expiration duration date tracking. QuickBooks Enterprise 24 provides the improved reporting on expiration date. As I mentioned earlier, it's always nice to get the reports the same time you get the features, but sometimes they're a year later, and that's kind of what this is about. Expiration dates can now be found in the new inventory stock status by lot number report I showed you, but you can also filter things down and get it streamlined. And here's kind of a streamlined version with all that excess out of the way and highlighting the expiration dates. The new prepayments detail by customer report is designed to show you those prepayments that have not yet been applied against an invoice. In other words, you took these prepayments in on your sales order and receive them. And now they're available to apply to the invoice once you create the invoice. QuickBooks 2024 provides an improved user experience within the Employee Center, making it easier to complete required information for employees. The feature is available for all QuickBooks 24 plus Enterprise Accountant, Enterprise Accountant versions within the U.S. when subscribed to a QuickBooks Enhanced Payroll subscription. The redesigned experience includes a new required info tab that keeps an employee's required information in a single place. Information previously recorded on the personal and address and contact tabs were relocated to the new required info tab. And the new required info tab conveniently holds all the employees required information like name and address, date of birth, uh, those kinds of things where you used to have to go to multiple tabs to get the info. Now, because QuickBooks realized that users sometimes rushed at an employee at the last minute in order to process their first payroll, 
and then they forget about maybe things being left out. The enhanced experience now includes new visual cues uh, to uh, alert you to the fact that there is information missing uh, in the employee's record. But even though uh, it's missing, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, enhanced payroll will uh, keep you from uh, processing a paycheck, even if there is required information that is incomplete. So when that is the case, then you also receive an advisory pop-up message that uh, tells you that uh, you have missing information for an employee and giving you the link back so you can immediately go and provide the needed information to complete their profile. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a new improved employee capital management functionality for those people who are also using enhanced payroll. And it is available uh, to uh, everyone uh, who is using Plus Enterprise Accountant and Enterprise Accountant. And uh, that's only within the United States. This isn't uh, available to our Canadian friends. Uh, it expands the capability for fully integrating 401k retirement plans as part of this feature. And those retirement plans are made available through guideline. More and more businesses are starting to offer 401 retirement plans for their employees well-being and to aid in retaining uh, help. And uh, by incorporating guidelines into the available offerings and payroll functionality, uh, it now makes it easier than ever to offer a variety of 401k retirement plans. It is true that a similar feature like this was outlined uh, in QuickBooks 2023, and that guideline was offering uh, 401s uh, to users uh, of QuickBooks 2023, but that was only for uh, subscribers to the QuickBooks Assisted Payroll. And now for 2024, uh, that feature has been expanded to, once again, enhanced payroll subscribers. Businesses with QuickBooks 2024 and enhanced payroll can quickly sign up for a fully integrated and affordable 401k, offer it to their employees, and then it plugs in all the functionality so that as uh, payroll is processed, uh, the uh, contributions are uh, not only computed and reported, but sent on uh, for uh, administration by guideline. So now uh, I'm gonna take a few moments and look at the questions because there's a few here before I go into this next poll. And um, Yes, uh, uh, Keith uh, mentioned that uh, the uh, Premier Accountant and ES Accountant were made available, and I believe that was again on October 26th. And uh, yesterday, uh, all versions of 2024 became available. And no, you cannot turn off automatic updates in in 23 or 24. Updates are becoming a fact of life, just kind of like they are uh, with your Windows products. 
And unfortunately, no, I did not have uh, the information regarding cost. However, we had not been advised that there was going to be any price increase. So, uh, Cindy, uh, I would just suggest that you uh, go over to the QuickBooks desktop website. And will non-admin users be able to run the update or does? Uh, so on your local machine, uh, you, the updates uh, will self-install once you click Try Update. Uh, never mind, last slide answered the question. Uh, Why are we getting notices to company files that don't use payroll that we need uh, a Washington necessary payroll update? I wished I knew the answer to that, Cheryl, and I can say that I haven't seen it, so not sure. Uh, and Karen says it's just a test alert. They got it in Connecticut, but unfortunately, Karen, that's not what mine was. <laughs> uh, we have a tornado alert in another part of the, or one of the surrounding counties that I monitor. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what she was asking uh, or what Dave was asking about. Is this only for enterprise as well? Uh, if you'll uh, chat back in, what the is this? Uh, I'll try to answer it. And if there is info missing on the screen and you cannot even set up the employee without going to payroll setup, you cannot add an employee on the fly. Um, that's true. You cannot add employees on the fly. You have to initially set up uh, at least the required information. But uh, the up or the flag is designed to tell you that other components uh, that should be uh, completed are missing and need to be completed after a payroll, if you're in the middle of processing a payroll, rather than stop you from processing it. Are the reporting enhancements only available in enterprise? Most of the reporting. Uh, that I gave you is listed as only being available in enterprise, and I only tested it in enterprise, but there may very well be a few of those things that uh, are going to be available in uh, Pro and Premier Plus, but many of them are also replayed, are related to enterprise only features. And uh, Paul asked, uh, can you still turn on payroll functionality without payroll subscription? And yes, you can. It's still possible to actually do full manual payroll inside uh, QuickBooks. And here, uh, I'm sorry, Hector has said, yes, there is a price increase uh, and there is no actual QuickBooks desktop website. Or if there is, it's really hard to find. And yes, it has been really hard to find, uh, but you can find it because if you go to the actual uh, QuickBooks website uh, and you do the comparison of uh, versions of QBO, it'll also show you QuickBooks desktop and uh, you can click there for more information. And that site was supposed to be live yesterday. Uh, in 2023 QBD, you don't have a choice when you do updates, uh, and it takes forever to open the file. Um, well, I know that, yes, they turned off the ability to stop auto updates in 2023. I, I can't answer why your file would, uh, take forever to open, um, need to make sure that all the windows are closed uh, when you close uh, the file. 
not seeing the poll. I haven't. Oh, it's. I haven't opened this poll yet. And uh, the federal government was running an emergency system test. That's why every phone was screaming. Yeah. Maybe so. Uh, I just know mine specifically said tornado warning. <laughs> and uh, lot number report, inventory category report, prepayment SO reports are all enterprise only. That's right. But Hector, because uh, those are all features that are only enterprise. Uh, and Dave reports that uh, he purchased Pro Plus yesterday uh, for two users at $880. So with that said, I'm going to launch um, the next poll and... It should be this one. Uh, would like to know which one of these features uh, you like the best now that you've heard about them. And uh, we've only got about 45% participation, so go ahead and click on this poll, especially if you need uh, CPE. And it's kind of a horse race between product security, prepayments, and improved reporting. And it's coming down to the wire. And the winner is prepayments, 44%. With enhanced product security and reporting improvements, a tie. At 34%, they'll have to share the second place trophy. Okay. And uh, now, as promised, I'm going to uh, talk a little about uh, my comparison of. Uh, QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Some of you may have only attended just to hear this today. What I find, what uh, I really think about uh, how QBD and QBO compare. So uh, here's my list, and uh, here's my comparison. Uh, now, uh, as you can see. On the uh, desktop side, the significant upfront investment, especially if you are running multi-user, is uh, probably the most negative factor associated with desktop. Uh, and if you need remote access, then you've either got to uh, have it hosted or you've got to provide for your own remote access. Uh, and uh, that's also additional cost. And uh, when I talk about QBD here, I'm talking about basically comparing this product to QBD plus uh, Pro and Premier, as opposed to QBO, which uh, you can see that uh, it has no upfront investment and uh, it, uh, does have an extra cost for each file you add. 
you know, you can have an unlimited number of files over under desktop, but every time you need to add a new file under QBO, well, there's an additional cost. And yes, it is discounted uh, for either a period of time or maybe life, depending on how you get it signed up. But it's still an additional cost. Uh, there are a lot of features in QBO that are somewhat limited, but are improving. And those are the ones in yellow. And, uh, you know, one of the things I don't like is that in QBO, you have to have a third-party app to do user control backups. But remember, it's also hosted in the cloud. It provides access and safety. Uh, you can get to it from almost anywhere. And uh, you can have uh, multiple people using it, usually up to five standard, depending on your version. So when I take all these things and I wait them out, surprise, surprise, uh, QuickBooks Online gets the cigar. Now, uh, the ability to glide right into QBO without substantial investment in hardware required by desktop, especially for multi-users, is significant. That and the fact that it's cloud-based uh, providing access from essentially anywhere at any time and pretty much without security worries is also significant in my way of thinking. Those two things overcome the limitations for almost all small businesses. That and the fact that Intuit is investing more and more in QBO to help overcome the limitations uh, shown in yellow uh, really uh, is uh, why I have to hang my Stetson on QBO at this level of the competition. And now uh, I'm going to move on and I'm going to evaluate uh, QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise Solutions with all the bells and whistles against QuickBooks Online Advanced. Uh, with all of its bells and whistles. And this is my comparisons. And that's the results. Uh, as you can see, uh, in terms of uh, QuickBooks Enterprise, there's only one factor that I think uh, is truly negative, And that is that larger files means slower performance. And the internet only impacts remote access and hosting. So uh, it really boils down to the size of your file. And I'll talk about that a little more in a moment. Uh, otherwise, there's really very few limitations. There are a few things that third-party apps help. And in some cases, yes, a third-party app might be really needed to provide the true functionality. But the fact that you can get almost everything out of Enterprise uh, is quite meaningful. And the fact that it also, uh, in some versions, supports up to 40 users uh, is a definite plus in my mind. Now, uh, there are things over in QBO that it does quite well. Uh, for example, the enhanced reporting and spreadsheet sheet sync uh, is great, along with the uh, workflow efficiency functionalities. Those are truly great features that I wish you could find over in desktop, but you can't. Uh, and there are things that simply QBO Advance still doesn't do. It has very limited pricing flexibility. Uh, you have to have a third party app to do shipping. Uh, it still only has single inventory methodology and no landed cost. And also it, inventory complexity, just it can't handle. To use anything related to warehouse and mobile, you have to have a third party app. So 
when it comes down to it, you guessed it, uh, QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions, with all the bells and whistles of advanced inventory, uh, gets the cigar. And uh, the only remote, uh, the only downside is that remote connectivity is absent. Uh, but it is possible with hosted or remote desktop configurations. File size is a big limitation. When files get large, either in terms of list elements or transactions, it just gets slower and slower and more prone to corruption. But depending on version, it can do almost anything on its own. Only large specialized businesses require an add-on like inventory or manufacturing. On the other hand, despite the convenience and improvements of QBO Advance, it's very costly, especially for corporations that have multiple subsidiaries. And that also points out that Enterprise has that new 2023 intercompany feature and QBO does not. But also, QBO Advance must still rely on too many apps to be used when it's going to perform a lot of the functions that are resident in enterprise. So I've got one more poll, and that is Nope, that's not it. Just give me this. There it is. Okay. So you should be seeing a poll that asks you, uh, what's your preferred product? What's going to earn your cigar? What are you going to hang your hat on now that you know about 2024? And you know my comparisons. And it says it's been launched, but I'm not seeing the results. Uh, well, folks, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm having problems launching this poll. So, um, I guess we'll just have to move on. And I've got one final poll. And that poll is... Hmm. I'm having the same problem, folks. I can't get these polls to launch. Uh, I've got one more poll that I got to ask, and well, <laughs> I'm sure having a problem with polls. Yep, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, everybody's going to get credit. I can't understand. It says all oh, my polls have been launched, but uh, clearly three of them weren't. So I'm going to go back to a few questions. That was supposed to be the last poll. So let me go up here and... Um, Not migrating to QBO, poll is defective. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I have no intention of ever migrating. Uh, that was, you can't answer the second part.
most of these are about the pole not showing, the pole not showing. Uh, Accountant Plus is still my weapon of choice. My favorite cigar, we go to Enterprise. And and I agree, everybody that uh, answered uh, at least one of the questions and was here for 50 minutes will get their certificate. I have no idea why the Last three polls just died. A lot of people saying they will continue on with Enterprise, uh, but some people are saying they really like what QBO Advanced is doing. So uh, we're boiling down to the wire and um, let's see. Let somebody else had raised their hand but I don't see it now. So uh, let me just say that uh, I want to thank all of you, uh, 100 and, I think 137 uh, attending today. And uh, I was tickled pink by you being here. It's been a long time since really I've done a webinar, especially done it by myself. <laughs> and uh, back when I was doing them all the time, we didn't even use Zoom. So uh don't blame me too much and uh i uh i hope to see a lot of you at quickbooks connect i plan on being there and so look for me i'll probably uh be in and out of the exhibit hall quite a bit and uh hope you had a great time here today learned a little something mm -hmm.